Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be having a very special video. We're going to be looking at the other mainframe operating system DOS VS or sometimes DOS VSC as a later incarnation of the same operating system was called by IBM. We've looked extensively of course at this uh, family of operating systems OS 360 later on called MVS and then OS 390 and today is EOS. Uh, in the last couple of videos we looked very extensively at uh, CP or VM 370 and then VMXA and uh, VM ESA and ZVM operating systems. Um, and the one thing that we haven't done in this channel yet is looking at the family of uh, DOS uh, operating systems as uh, as they were called by IBM. Uh, if you remember when IBM first released the S360 family of operating systems in the mid 60s, they intended everybody to use the OS360 operating systems. However, it was significantly delayed and number one, number two, it was way too large to fit on most models um, except for the very top models of the S360 family of uh, mainframe computers and so most most customers couldn't use it and that's why as a stopgap measure IBM released DOS 360 which was a disk operating system for the S360 family computers in the mid and lower range. Uh, there was also one more family called TOS uh, with a T tape operating system which didn't require disks at all but that quickly disappeared and so um, since um, I I do I have used DOS, DOS VSE uh, in the past and uh, and I enjoy using it but I'm, I'm not uh, an expert on it and um, in the last uh, couple of months I worked very extensively with Professor René Ferlon uh, of Montreal up in Canada on uh, on uh, on VM370 and other subjects and uh, Professor René Ferlon offered to make a video today for DOS VSC, how to install it, how to operate it, and how to make it work on top of Hercules. So um, without much further ado, why don't I hand it over to René Ferlon and uh, hopefully you'll uh, follow his instructions on getting DOS VSC to run for you on your computer. René? Hello everyone. This is René from Montreal and this video is about DOS VS. Now DOS VS is the last member of the VSC family of operating system that's available in the public domain. You might ask yourself why is it that we don't hear that much about VSC or DOS VS? There are many reasons to that maybe. First of all I guess it's a smaller market for IBM, so we don't hear about that system that much for this reason. And as far as DOSVS is concerned, itself that that vintage system that we could run possibly under Hercules, why is it that we don't hear much more about it? I see maybe two reasons. The first one is that at least right now, as we speak, there is no one that can provide us with a stable, well-designed, well-documented turnkey of DOSVS. It's not like MVS38G, where Jürgen gave us the TK4-. If you look at DOSVS, nobody's there. So that makes it things more difficult, I guess. The second reason is that even if we have a DOSVS system, DOSVS is essentially a pure batch system. There is no, uh, there is no interactive connection. You don't log on to it. There is no interaction of that kind. So all the jobs have to be uh, submitted through the card reader. So that's the only way to communicate with the system. There is a console, of course, but. When you want to work with the USVS, you have to submit jobs to the card reader. So that makes the interaction much more simpler. Could be interesting for some people, but it could be boring for some others. So maybe for that reason, it's less popular than MVS 3AJ, for example. But still, I believe personally that uh, the USVS is worth discovering, worth exploring and it's worth giving a chance, so that's why I made this video. Anyway, what do I want to do right now in this particular video? I want to download 
install IPL and shut down a DOS VS system run as a guest under VM370. That's what I want to do. And if I do my job properly, you will watch this video to learn how to do that. And after that, you will never watch my video again. Okay, so let's start and do that. First step, download the systems. We're gonna need to download a VM370 and of course download a DOS VS. So let's go on the internet. I will open my, where is my, <coughs> oh yeah, that's it. <coughs> I'm gonna open Chrome. Now for VM370, let's uh, Google something. Okay, here it is. We're gonna Google for G for UGM. And then there is this uh, vintage computer page over here. So let's go there. Then you can see, uh, maybe I go. You can see the VM370 downloads here. So let's go there. And then we're going to download this version, version 1.2 of the six pack. Okay. So I'm not going to do it now, but it's already here on, here on my desktop. So you just download this. That's fine. If you look carefully, you can see that there, there is a beta release here. This version is currently under revision. You know, they're going to change it and, and produce version 1.3 at some point. <coughs> But it's not the beta version we're going to use. We're going to use the 1.2. It's going to be enough for the moment. Now for DOSVS, what do we do? So let me open another tab. There is an address on the web that gives a copy of a DOSVS system prepared by an American named George Shedlock uh, 10 years ago. It's a very good version of it. It's almost a turnkey. He had a uh, a web page at certain time but this web page is gone now so DOSVS is kind of an orphan on the internet but we can still download it provided we know the address so the address is dosvs.31bits.net let's go there take some time and now you can see a, a certain number of files of archives actually the dates here are 2010 so that seems to be stable for a long time now and we need the first one the usvs 5 pack version 1 full zip that's the one you need to do to download and it's already there here on my desktop okay so that's the download part okay fine i'm gonna hide this Let's go to the second step now, which is to install. Okay, so to install, first thing first, I'm gonna unzip this. So unzip the VM370 six pack zip. Okay, I move this here, I open it. You can see a bunch of uh, folders and files here. There's a disk folder over here so let's put the zip of the dosvs pack five pack in here good now i can close this i will take this folder now and and i'm gonna put it in another folder where i keep all my systems but you can put it somewhere else if you wish it doesn't matter so i'm gonna put it there and now I'm going to go and uh, open a terminal window or a shell window or a command window, depending on the system you are, over here. Good. And I'm going to change directory to the place where this uh, VM system is located. So CD VM 370. Let's take a look. Again, we have a bunch of folders and a few files uh, maybe it's hard to see it on the video here i don't have a very sophisticated uh, recording stuff i'm using 
quick time on my Macintosh, so I'll have to deal with this. Anyway, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is going to the disk folder and unzip this uh, DOSVS system. So let's go to disk and unzip DOSVS, blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna get five DASD, 53350 DASD, hence the name five pack. And that's the DOSVS system. So if I look at it, maybe I clear this. And I, you can see a bunch of files starting with VM. Those are the DASDs of the VM370 system. And at just here, you know, at this part, you have the DASDs of the DOSVS system. I'm not gonna de destroy this zip. I'm gonna keep it for the future. So that's one thing good, but now we have to update the, the Hercules configuration file of the VM370 system. But before I do that, I'm gonna change the name of two folders. This I have to do on the Macintosh and on Linux, I guess, but on Windows you don't need because Windows is uh, case uh, insensitive. So I'm gonna change the disk like this to capital D and I'm gonna change IO to capital IO. And then you can see there is a maybe, no, you can see here there is the six pack.conf, that's the configuration file of the six pack. I'm not gonna change it, but I'm gonna copy it into another one called Hercules.cnf. Oh, sorry, of course I have to take the six pack like this. Conf. Good. And then I'm gonna change this Hercules CNF here, okay? So I'm gonna use VI for that. Moshix will be happy. I use VI for 15 years every day I was working, so I know VI pretty well. <clears throat> CNF. There's a lot of definitions in it. Now we just progress into the file, go down. And at some point you're gonna see uh, comments here saying these two packs are for CMS DOS. I have not tested CMS DOS. Uncomment them if you use them. We're not gonna uncomment them, but we're gonna add the definitions of the DASDs of the DOS VS system we just download, okay? So I'm gonna put it there. So let me bring back my cursor down here. And now we have to put the DASDs on very specific address. And these will be 09A0, 09A1, 9A2, 9A3, and 9A4. You have to use these, otherwise it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So let's do that. 09A0, that's gonna be 33, no. 3350 located in disk slash dosr34.3350.cckd. Good. Now, so there will be one, two, three, uh, whoop, three, and four. Good. Uh, the first DASD is this one. The second is uh, Power R33, uh, 34. Then Work01. Then VSAM01. Then OPTLB1. Whoop. That's not what I want to do. Uh, change word OPT LB one. Whoops. Ah, sorry. Over here, and I have to change this to lowercase 
as it's lowercase in the in the folder so <clears throat> here they are let me count one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi so that you can maybe you know uh, stop the video and check properly the, the address that should be it so. now I'm done I believe these are the right names uh, so let's check this just for the fun of it so, you can see DOS R34 power R34 OPT LB1 with the small caps over here and that should be okay so at this point I'm ready to IPL VM370 and it's very simple you just type Hercules return this will start Hercules and IPL VM370 at the same time just wait for this message where you get command complete when you got this message command complete VM370 has been IPL properly so this is very quick uh, but we need to do uh, two commands now the first one is very important it's slash start all this is to start all the uh, unit record devices you can see that they are drained here at IPL you want them to be started otherwise you won't be able to print anything or read anything so that's one thing and maybe we check that we have the DASDs we need so I'm gonna slash query DASD free and that's good I can see my DASDs 9A0, 9A1, 9A2, 94, 93. That's fine. So they're all there. So as far as IBM, uh, not IBM, but uh, VM370 is concerned, we're done. Okay. So I have download and install, and I have my VM370 running. Now I want to IPL DOSVS. So I don't need this window anymore. I'm gonna leave it there but <clears throat> I shouldn't be uh, using it for a while now so the next step to IPL DOSVS is to start of course a 370 connection to log on to a virtual machine so let's do that a new window VM terminal here all right a return we get the CP read here, that's fine. Let's log on to DOSVS and the password is DOSVS. First you get this message here in sufficient storage, blah, blah, blah. Just ignore it, it's harmless. And then we have the VM read here, which means that uh, CMS is waiting for a command. We just type return. We get a message again that this guy is not attached. Ignore the message, no problem. And then we have the ready prompt, that's fine. Now let's clear this. At this point, we are ready to IPL DOSVS. So what do we do? Well, first type sharp CP to get in CP mode, and then IPL 360 not 9A0 but 360 return now apparently nothing happened but in fact no because you can see that the virtual machine is running here so what's going on well it's just waiting for a console maybe so we're gonna connect the console to the machine the virtual machine so let me do that with a tab maybe virtual terminal like this good and now we want to connect this uh, terminal to the DOSVS uh, virtual machine and as Moshix told us we can't log on to it but we can dial the virtual machine that's what we're gonna do dial DOSVS now we're connected that's fine what do we do <clears throat> well we have to type enter again and this will generate an interrupt and tell the virtual machine that this is the console and 
And from that moment, DOSVS will talk to us on this console and ask us some questions. So let's do that. Return. The first thing he's asking us is to give the supervisor name. So what's a supervisor? That's the equivalent of a kernel or a nucleus. On DOSVS, there's a lot of supervisors, possibly several supervisors, store on disk. And at IPL time, you have to specify which one you want to use. So in the case of this system, the one you want to use is $$A$SUP1, which is an example of what they call in the DOS world an A transient. So you type this and type return once. This will capitalize the, the letters. And then you type enter a second time so that the DOSVS will know on which device to look for the IPL command. So I type return a second time and bam, I got <coughs> this message. I can ignore it again. And then DOSVS asked me about the IPL control commands. There will be two commands we will enter at this point. The first one is the set command. This will set the clock, actually. You get this message. Everything's fine. Then you type DPD. This is to define the page data set. The page data set on DOSVS is kind of a swap file. This is the data set that implements the virtual storage. So he needs to know where it is. So I do that. You get the address of the page data set as actually here. And then you have a message telling you that the IPL is complete. So it's true, the IPL is complete, but we're not entirely done at this point. There are still some stuff to do before we can use our DOSVS system. And maybe this is the right time now to explain a little bit about the message of the, that DOSVS is, uh, possibly gives us. Here's we have one, you know, warm start copy of SVA found. Look at the uh, message number. It is divided in three. The first number or the first character is this, the part of the system that produced the message. The three character after that is the message number. And then at the end, you have a letter, which is A here. It can be A, D, E, or I. If it's I, like this, for example, it's just an information. If it's E, it's an error. So something's very wrong. If it's D, means a decision. You have to take a decision. And if it's A, means action. You have to take an action. So DOSVS here is expecting us to take an action with respect to that warm start copy, actually. So SVA means a share virtual area. That's the part of the uh, virtual storage that contains phases and commands that are used by all the partitions. And he wants to know what we want to do with it. We can delete it or keep it. But in this case, we're going to keep it. So keep. And then another message ending by A. Uh, what it means is that DOSVS is essentially asking us, what do you want to do now? Okay, so maybe that's the right time to talk about the USVS a little bit more. The USVS is different from MVS in the sense that there is only a finite number of jobs that can be run at the same time. What happens with this page data set, it has size 16 megs, I believe, that's the whole address space, and it's split it in pieces called partitions. There are five of them. And you can run a program in a partition and only <clears throat> on one program in a partition. So only five programs at the same time. And <clears throat> BG is one of the partition. The other four are F1, F2, F3, and F4. And now BG is working. That's fine. And we could run jobs in BG if we wanted. <clears throat> but we would have to do it manually, you know reading the, 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 the job from the card reader and then triggering the executions and allocating the, the units and stuff like that. That would be uh, 
tedious, I guess. So what we need now is to run a job scheduler on MVS. The job scheduler is a job entry subsystem 2 and it started automatically at IPL but on this DOS VS system not on modern VSE but on this DOS VS system we have to start manually the, the job scheduler. The name of the job scheduler is POWER it stands for Priority Output Writer Execution Processor and Input Readers so it's a complicated acronym <coughs> Now we have to run power. We have to run it in one of the partitions, but not BG. We're going to run it in F1, the highest priority partition. Even today in, on modern VSC system, power is still run in F1. So we have to run power in F1. So first, the first thing first, we're going to stop BG like this. And then I'm going to do something some of you might recognize KS. I'm going to change this 6 to 20. And I'll be able to clear my console at this point by just typing K. <clears throat> and now what I want to do is start F1 in order to run my power job and start my job scheduler. So I will start F1 by the command batch F1. Now he asked me to do something. Uh, now we have to understand something. The, the JCL, uh, well, the power, the program has to be started with some JCL, like uh, all the jobs that have to be run on DOSVS. Now that JCL could be stored outside the system and read from the card reader, but it has been stored on disk in this one. Let me show you, maybe I do this. Uh, and I go IBM VM370 disk. And I do DAS DLS DOS uh, R34. Now I can see what are the, the files on the system residence disk. This is the system, dosvs.systes. This thing is a VSAM catalog, and you can see in between Power VS Season Tracks. That's the name of the data set that contain, contains the JCL to start Power, start the job scheduler. So on DOSVS, what happens is that each time you want to use a file on a system, like this you need two things you need what they call a label and an assignment the label connect the, the name of the data set to what they call a logical unit and an assignment connect the logical unit to a physical unit a specific physical unit that is the address of the DASD essentially so in here what I have to do I have to tell the system where give the label for the job and also give the, the assignment. Fortunately for us, the label is stored already on the system, so we don't have to, to specify it, but we have to give the assignment. That's, that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to assign, so SGN, the, the logical unit for, the <coughs> for this uh, this job, this data set, the logical unit is SISIN. Let me come back here. SISIN. And I have to assign SISIN to a physical unit. The physical unit is the, the um, system residence disk. And remember, the address is 360, so I'm going to use hexadecimal 360. Now, F1 is happy about that. That's good. And now we know to run the job. And to do that, or trigger the execution of the job, we just have to uh, press enter once again. And you will see the job power starts. Here it is. We have to wait. It's not done yet. We can see here that uh, 
Hercules is running. Maybe I do this. Okay. Now look at this. Power VS initiation completed. That's good. The job is over. But we also have here a message. Huh? It's a message ending with A and telling us intervention required on sys 0 c So we have to do something about that. I will come up to that later. But the USVS is asking us to do something here. So let me let uh, let me uh, forget about it for the moment. But I'll come back to it uh, in a few minutes. Now, what do we have to do at this point? We have also to assign Sysin in the partitions. So we had to assign Sysin in F1 to run power. But now we have to assign Sysin in the partitions to run jobs in the partitions. Of course, we're, gonna, we're not going to assign this to the system residence disk. We're going to assign this to the card reader. So let me do it. It's a little bit uh, tedious. It's going to go from one partition to another, but that's fine. So assign Sysin to the reader. Assign Sysin to the reader. Assign Sysin to the reader again. And we're almost done. You can see that Sysin has been assigned to X00C, the card reader that's over here. We can see it in the configuration. Uh, another return, 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 return. And then we have these messages that the partitions are waiting for work. So they're ready to accept jobs and execute jobs. Are we done? Not entirely. There are two things to do. Well, first of all, we have to deal with that action message before. But even before that, we have to do something else. We have to assign the logical units in the partitions. So let me explain maybe a little bit. <coughs> On MVS, let's say you want to compile link and go execute a program. This is typically done with a catalog procedure. And the first step of it will be the compile. And if you look at the JCL, you're going to see that the compiler is going to produce an object module that's going to be stored in a temporary file. And that uh, temporary file will be stored on disk somewhere and it's the operating system, MVS, that's going to decide where to store the, the, uh, the temporary file. Now on DOSVS, if I want to compile, that's about the same thing. The compiler will store the object module somewhere on disk, but if he has to store the object module in a data set, that data set must be described by a label and an assignment. Now the label is already in the system, like it was the case for the, the JCL of power, but I need to assign <coughs> the logical unit. You know? So this can be done either on the console like this, like we did in the past, or it can be done through jobs that I'm going to run <coughs> right now. So that's the, uh, the last uh, option I'm going to use. And for that, let me show you something. Because power is now running, it means I can type commands to power. So all the commands to power start with the letter P. And here's one command I'm going to do. P display RDR. RDR. So that's going to display the reader queue of power. The reader queue is a data set storing jobs on disk. Sorry, and there are a few jobs here for our to use for initialization of the uh, the system. You can see a, a bunch of jobs here, starting with the letter XX in it, XX in it BG, XX in it F2, so on. So these are the jobs that are gonna assign the logical units in all the partitions. So I need to run these jobs. And to run these jobs, 
I just have to release them from the reader queue. And how do I do that? Well, it's a power command, p release, uh, from the reader, all the jobs starting with xx. So I will now press enter and you're going to see all the jobs starting and running. <coughs> now you can see sys004 has been assigned to. So sys004, that's an example of a logical unit and it's just been assigned. And we're almost done. I'm going to clear this. Let me display now the list queue, the output queue. I can see the my jobs. That's actually the output of the jobs. They're still there because the disposition is H here, which means old. I could print these, but I don't need them. So I'm going to delete them. So P delete. From the list queue, everything starting with XX. And up to this point now, I have to deal with this message we had before. Asking for an intervention on the, the reader. Remember? So let me explain what's going on there. It's very simple, actually. So I'm going to do P display. Whoop. P display A. I can see all the, the tasks that are handled by the job scheduler. There is a print task, a punch, a punch task, a reader task, and a task for each of the partitions. And all of these are inactive, which means actually that they are active but idle. But as you can see, there's nothing with the reader here. Okay, so that's because we need to intervene somehow. <clears throat> What's going on actually? What's well, very simple. When we started power, we actually started to uh, the auto start the reader. And because of that, he's trying to run a job. So he looks at the, at the reader and he sees no job there. So he says, well, you asked me to run a job and there's no job, do something. So the solution is to run a job. It could be a dummy job, a very simple job doing nothing with <clears throat> running no program whatsoever. That's possible. But here I'm going to run a, a, a Fortran program just to make an example of execution maybe. So, so at the same time that I will handle this message, I'm going to show you how to run a, a Fortran program on the system. That's going to be good. And actually, this problem is also true on uh, an MVS when we start the system. And in some cases, there is a, there is a dummy job that's already a store in the, in the card reader to handle this. So now I want to run a job and submit it to the uh, reader so that I handle this uh, error message I had before. There are two ways I can do this. I can send it to VM here and ask VM to send the job to the card reader of the OSVS. And it should solve my problem. But I'm not going to do this. I'm going to use another virtual machine to do it. So let me get rid of this one. OK. And I will start a connection. Good. Uh, now I'm going to log on again, but not in the OSVS, of course, I'm going to log on on CMS user with password CMS user. I have the VM raid, I type return. I got these messages, I don't give a damn. Uh, so let's clear this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a job, store it in a CMS file, and then I'm going to punch it to this virtual machine for execution. So let me create first the, the job. Now on this particular version of VM370, the full screen editor is not available. So I'm going to use the old editor, edit, and I'm going to create the Hello World program. 
I'm going to use a file type of DOSVS just to remind me that this is a, actually a DOSVS job. And let's enter the job now. I'm going to go do it faster because the, the video is quite long now. So uh, input. And now I'm going to give instructions for power and then the JCL of the job. And then I'm going to save this and quit and submit the job. So <clears throat> let's do this. First is star dollar dollar uh, job. That's for power. Job name LO. Class equals zero, which means I'm going to run it in BG. Disposition equals D, which means I'm not going to keep it in the reader queue afterwards. Then dollar, uh, no, star, dollar, dollar, LST. What do I want to do with the, the output? I'm going to put it in class A. I'm going to delete it. Well, print it, actually. I'm not going to keep it in the list queue. And I'm going to say there are no uh, separator pages because VM already has a separator page. Now I'm ready to write the JCL of the OSVS. So the first thing is the job card. It's much simpler than the job card on MDS. You just write job like this and after that write whatever you want. So hello program maybe. Then I'm going to say an option link, which means I want to create this uh, object module. Then I'm going to call the Fortran compiler with 2F. Then I'm going to give my uh, Fortran program. Uh, uh, sorry, 3100. Hello world. Stop. And that's the end of my input. Then I'm going to link it zip. Then I'm going to execute. And this is the end of the job. And I'm going to tell power that my job, my jobs are done. I can run several jobs with the same uh, command for power. Uh, okay, I'm going to file this. Let me type it again for you to see. So there are two instructions for power. This is the job itself. And normally that should work, I believe. Well, let's hope. Now, <coughs> sorry, what do we have to do? Take a little bit of water, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then I have to punch this job to the card reader of this guy here. So first I need to spool the punch to DUSVS. Oh, sorry. Then I have to punch my job without a header. And this will send the job to the card reader of this guy. Okay. And this will run the job. Hopefully. You can see that it's running. Good. Mm -hmm. So if I go here, well first I see that he punched the file to the OSVS here. And if I come to the login console, you can see that the punch file from CSMS user has been received. And then over here, he got this from the reader. Now he's waiting for another job. The job is run in BG, like I asked. And then the output has been printed and the BG is ready to work for another job. So now if I clear this and I do a P display, 
A. You can see now that my reader is inactive and everything's fine. I need to do this because if you don't run the job, you'll run into trouble when you shut down the system because it's still waiting to do something with that reader, that job you, you ask and you're not giving it. So you need to run this job. But normally you will IPL the system to, to run jobs and so there won't be any problem with that. Okay, so maybe a remark at this point. If you are, if you think about it a little bit, now you can see why I've been running this DOSVS system into uh, as a guest under VM370 because I told you before that there is no there is a, there is no interactive interface on DOSVS. So we have to submit jobs to the card reader all the time. That's okay. But if you look at it, <coughs> I just gave myself some kind of an interactive interface. Because think about it on MVS, for example, what do we do? We open a 3270's connection, we log on to the system, we use some kind of editor to edit members containing jobs and files and data and all kinds of stuff like that, and then we submit jobs. So we connect, edit, and submit, and that's exactly what we did here. We did not connect to DOSVS, but we connect to a CMS virtual machine, we use the editor there to build a job and we submit it to DOSVS. So this CMS virtual machine here plays the role uh, or provide us with a, uh, a replacement solution for the lack of an interactive uh, interface for DOSVS. So that's why DOSVS is typically run into a virtual machine on VM. So I can adjust this virtual machine in such a way that submission to this one is easy and then I have all the facilities of interactive facilities of CMS at my disposal to help me running jobs on DOSVS. So that's it for this thing. So let me log off from CMS user. And if I'm right with my video, the last thing I need to do now is to show you how to shut down this system. Oh, sorry. I, well, that's okay. <clears throat> I need to shut down. Okay, so I just uh, untapped them in two different windows, but that's okay. I thought for a while that I had closed my window. Which I'll not, the last thing you want to do is just close this, of course. So what you need to do, well, in the console here, can I type a command? Uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I want to stop power. Well, I need to stop power and I need to stop the partitions. So first stop power, that's P and. Power VS has been terminated, that's good. We need now to stop the job that run power, so slash ampersand, then F2, what do we do with F2? We unbatch it, we unbatch F4, unbatch F3, we do not unbatch BG, we cannot unbatch BG, we can only stop BG. But before we do that, we're going to stop recording, so ROD. Now you can see that the job power is done. I can unbatch F1. And recording is closed now, complete, so I can stop BG. And at this point, all the partitions are stopped and power is, uh, is uh, finished. So there's nothing else to do on this console. I go back to the logon console here. I go in CP, so sharp CP. I have the CP read message, that's fine. First, I'm gonna reset this console here. So reset 01F. 
then log off and that's it I can close this close this so I'm done with the OSVS I shut it down I need to shut down VN370 now so let's go back here you need to do a very important command which is slash shutdown and this will generate a warm start data for the next time and shut down the system put it in uh, disable wait state at that point you can stop the CPU and quit everything and you're done so at this point I think I have done what I promised to do I have downloaded the systems I have installed them, I have IPL DOSVS and I have shut it down. Now I will finish with something. As you notice, I run a Fortran program to handle my message. That was okay. If you try to run a COBOL program or a PL1 program, there are these two compilers are available in DOSVS. If you try to do just an Hello World program, you'll run into trouble. It's, it won't work with this system at, at least. We need to tweak it a little bit so that we can use these compilers. So maybe in another video, if you are interested, I will explain how to tweak that system in order for you to compile and run PL1 programs, and COBOL programs, so, and especially the and Queen program of Mochix, I guess. So, <clears throat> so that will be for the future if you like this video. And for the moment, I will end here. It's a pretty long video, almost 15 min 50 minutes. And uh, at this point, I guess, uh, back to Mochix, if he has something to tell you more after all I said. Thank you very much, Professor René Ferland. Uh, it's, uh, it was a great video to watch. I very much enjoyed you getting this to run and uh, I can't wait to have more videos from you. By the way, everybody, if you want to get in touch with uh, René Ferland the, and discuss either DOSVS or many other topics, René is very knowledgeable about uh, mainframe subjects. Uh, this is how to get in touch with him. There's a page for him here at the University um, of, uh, of Quebec and uh and this is how you can uh, get in touch with him uh, thank you very much again Rene, for uh, for uh, making this video and uh, if you have any if you have any questions uh, please post them as uh, comments below this video if you like this particular video made by Rene Ferland please uh, press on the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed to the Motion Mainframe channel yet then I would urge you to do so thank you very much and goodbye